Hi, my name's Cole. This is my 1947 Aronka Champ. The Aronka Model 7 Champion, commonly known as the Champ, is a single-engine light airplane with a high wing, generally configured with fixed conventional landing gear and tandem seating for two occupants. Designed for flight training and personal use, it entered production in the United States in 1945, spawning one of the most popular and longest produced light airplane models in the world. You probably noticed that handy seaplane door. That's not stock to champs, and Cole will talk about that more later in the video. This particular airplane belongs to my husband and I, and is a 1947 7AC. Commonly used as a tailwheel trainer, we find the Champ to be a docile and enjoyable airplane. We hope you enjoy our coverage of the plane, and make sure to like and follow. Alright, well I'm Cole Crawford. Uh, this is my 1947 Aronka Champion. Originally a 7AC converted to a 7CCM. So what you get out of that is the 90 horsepower engine. Uh, you get 11 extra gallons of fuel in the wings. So you get a total of 24 with that uh, 7 ccm conversion, yeah. That'll do probably three and a half hours with, with reserves. Of course, you're limited by useful load. We, we, uh, we're limited to uh, 1,300 pounds on this one, so uh, our empty weight's just over uh, 1,100, I believe, so we can't really carry a whole lot. Cruise, think, uh, the airplane will cruise. It will do 90, 95 with the 90 horsepower engine. Uh, when you do that, you're really pulling this airframe along. Uh, it really prefers, like, 75 to 85 is where, where it likes to sit. v and &E, I believe it's around 100 and 120 and you're really diving for that. I, I, I'd have to look at the manual to tell you that. I've never gotten anywhere near it. And it stalls at under, uh, under 30 miles per hour, which is kind of cool statute. So I was one of the kids who was always looking up at the sky. Uh, I was like, it's actually, it's kind of interesting to be interviewed right now because YouTube is kind of what brought me into that was, that was kind of my introduction to the world. Um, I didn't grow up around it. Started flight training in, uh, in high school. I uh, got licensed at 17. Went to college and spent some time there. Did some volunteer flying and whatnot through that and then started pr flying professionally uh, just, uh, just last year. So, Well, I want to fly something fast, uh, whether that's at an airline or, or at a corporate gig. Something, something with a turbine engine would, would be cool. Right now I'm, I'm teaching in 172s, so. I had, a lot of, I had a lot of mentors who liked champs and that kind of just brought me into the champ world. Kind of a, a three-way fight between people who like, you know, Cubs or Taylor Craft or, or champs. I just, I like the look of a champ. I know some people say they kind of look like a uh, flying bathtub, but uh, I've found something endearing in that. As far as speed goes, it's the, the middle of the of those three, uh, Taylor Craft's a little bit faster and Cubs a little bit slower. I just I just like the look of a champ. Right now it's a it's a sightseeing, cruise around, time building airplane. Uh, eventually, once I get really up to snuff on tailwheel, that I feel like I can really create a new tailwheel pilot effectively. I'd, I'd like to maybe teach it a little bit, but for right now I'm I'm building my own skills. One of the best passengers I've had is my German Shepherd. Uh, she sits in that back seat. I, I harness her into the to the harness and put some cotton in her ears to protect her. And uh, she just conks right out, goes to sleep. Sometimes she'll look out the window, but most times she's just sleeping from the vibration. So she's my best passenger. I picked up the airplane on an almond farm in uh, just south of Sacramento, California, in that in that valley area. Pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I'd never flown a Champ before. We we, we took off out of that 2,000 foot strip closer to the trees than I was expecting. I flew it down the central, the central Valley of California and got stuck in Bakersfield for three days uh, because that Tejone Pass was, was clouded up and I didn't know how high the, the airplane would climb yet so I had a feeling I might be snaking through it a little bit. But while I was there, a uh, stray airport dog showed up. Somebody ended up dumping it on the airport, asked around a little bit, you know, has, has the dog abandoned? Has it been here for a while? And, and it had. I, Picked that dog up and stuck it in the back seat to see if it would cooperate, and she sure did. The next day, I, I knew I was going to get out of there, so I loaded her up into the courtesy car, uh, went and bought a harness that fit her, and stuck her in that back seat and took her to Los Angeles. So that was that's how I met my dog. All right. You ready to go for a fly? Yeah, let's go fly. Righty. Can you hear me? Yeah, you hear me okay? Absolutely. Got you loud and clear. All right. We got our weather here. Uh, just slightly to the. We just, the cross one's going to be just slightly to the uh, left of the runway. Is this airplane, is it, is it pretty heavily affected by crosswinds or? Yeah, that tailwheel will do that. 
So we're always extra careful to hold our crosswind correction on the uh, ground, even while we're taxiing. Is this my people whacking stick back here? What do you use this for? Uh, that's my uh, custom-made fuel, fuel gauge. So I can dip the tanks with that. Or, right. whack, or whack a student. There you go. Here. Scouts traffic. Champion 84868 eight, taxiing from the uh, FBO to runway 18. Scouts. So what makes a champ different than a cub? Uh, biggest difference is that gear. You know, on a, on a cub, you got the uh, bungees. We got oleo struts on. Okay. So they tend to waller around a little bit on the ground. How would you describe the, the actual moment when you touch the wheels? I, I find it pretty smooth when you're three-pointing them. Wheel landing can be a little bit tricky the first time. So just a disclaimer for, for the people that are watching, this is my husband. Um, we actually own this airplane together, and I'm um, using him as a uh, practice practice for other people as we uh, continue going around and do more and more interviews. So if we bicker a little bit, you guys got to forgive us. <laughs> We're going to let that cat out of the back, so it really happens. Yeah. Fun fact, Champ, or Cole actually has been in love with Champs for a long time. He's always wanted one. And then I like Cubs, but I'm, I'm warming up to the Champ world. But there's still lots of things he knows that I don't, so y'all are, are learning, learning right along with me. All right, so we'll point into the wind and get a run-up going on. I like to lock my tailwheel. We'll roll on up to 1,700 RPM. All right, at 1,700, we'll check our lift magneto. We a slight reduction in power. Back to both. Over to the right, another slight reduction. Pull our carburetor heat, another reduction there. How much are you looking for? Uh, on, the, on reductions. On the, on the magnetos, we're looking for about 150, no more than 150 RPM. And then uh, between 75 of each other. Gotcha. That just tells us that our magnetos are timed. And you left that carp heat on when you checked idle as well. Why did you do that? Uh, we see the rise when we put it back in when we're down gotcha. there at idle. Well, I'm happy with that if you are. I'm happy with it. Let's go fly. All right. All right. We look clear. Clear to me. Galveston traffic. Champion 84868 is departing runway 18. We turn out to the right. Galveston. So what's your rotate speed in this airplane? Uh, rotate around 45. Uh, I've read online best climb 55 miles per hour, but uh, far I can't find anything published by Aranka, so that's kind of kind of when that. she's ready, huh? Yep. Yeah. All right. Our heels off the brakes because we've got heel brakes on. We'll go full power. Get our stick forward to get that tail wheel off. About 50, we'll let it rotate off. When you push that tail up, how far do you go as far as pushing it forward? Are you kind of like... I'm, I'm going all the way forward, but the champ is notorious for kind of coming up slower than some okay. of the other light tail wheels. Can you go too far forward when you push forward? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. So you're not worried about prop clearance on this one particularly? Uh, not, on, not on this airplane. Not on this one. Gotcha. That's something when I fly the Waco, I'm, I'm thinking about, especially our taper wing. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. you got to roll on prop. Yeah. So what do you find your cruise speed to be in the airplane? Well, the, the airplane originally came with a little, uh, I can't remember, 65 or 75 horse Continental. And uh, this one at some point was modified to have a 90 horse, so it'll pull it along pretty well. It really likes 75 to 80 statue miles. Okay. Uh, it'll do 95 full bore. Gotcha. But you're really... You're really kind of dragging it along at that point. We'll level off here at 1,000. 22 to 2,300 is pretty comfortable for, for the power setting. Our trim control up here is a little bit different. It's mounted up high like on a, you know, a piper. Just move it forward and aft. And there's a lot of control authority with it, which is nice. Yeah, the first uh, the first airplane that I trained in, the Taylor Craft, had, it was ceiling mounted, but it was in the center, and it was like a cranking wheel. Yeah. Yeah, this is like you, you crank it around, and every once in a while it would skip. There's something wrong with the pulleys in there or something. So. There's something about a T-cart. Yep. Oh, one of the first things I noticed about the airplane whenever I first started flying it was how much adverse yaw it has coming from the, uh, the aileron. So I don't really know why this airplane has so much. Could you explain, explain that to me a little bit? Yeah, what so it has to do with, uh, with drag as a, uh, as a byproduct of the creation of lift. Whenever we roll our airplane like this, we're actually creating more uh, more lift on one side of the wing than the other, which inherently creates more drag. So we use a rudder to keep our uh, 
keep our turns coordinated so that that drag doesn't pull us in the opposite direction of the way we're trying to turn. Gotcha. Some airplanes just have more than others. If we come over this way, we should have a pretty good view of the harbor. All right. Yeah, I love love flying here late at night when the uh, the sun just starts to shine through that uh through that bridge and hits the crests of the of the waves. It's just beautiful. It's a pretty place to fly. Absolutely. As long as you can keep the salt off. So what do you do to prevent corrosion down here living on the coast? Oh, you just got to keep a coat of protection on it. Uh, fluid film works pretty good. I think it's probably one of the safer safer things to use. I don't worry about being a you know, yeah. natural product. Uh, corrosion X, everybody loves that. It's a little, there's a lot less to worry about, I guess, you know, with it being wooden fabric. So you just, what, what parts are you really concerned about with corrosion? Oh, fittings and, and uh, fasteners, hardware. That's, that's where it's really going to, you're going to see it the most. The propeller, for some reason, tends to be uh, one of the quicker things to start fitting as well. Sure. I'd imagine it has to do with just the speed that it's turning through the uh, air, or it could be metallurgy. I'm not really sure, but Interesting. we just tend to see that pretty pretty early. And that's a pretty view back there. The plane door is pretty nice for that, too. Oh, definitely. That's a custom job. Yeah, tell me a little bit about your seaplane door. You don't see something like this on the champ very often. Well, uh... Hell, I don't even think I've seen one at all. I wish I could tell you the guy who did it. It came to me like this, but, uh... Yeah, the plane was on floats at one point. I think, uh, kind of 1990s. Around the 1990s, it was on uh, PK floats. It got taken off. It's nice because it's, it's got extra primer. That, that green zinc chromate stuff they put under the paint okay. um, to protect from corrosion a little bit better than maybe your stock airplane would, which is nice for being down here by the salt water. But yeah, it got this door when it was on floats and we kept it. It's nice for the view. Yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of people asking about it, a lot of attention, huh? We do. I've had multiple people call me asking for the, uh, the 337 form. That's the form that you get approved to uh, make a modification on. That's kind of the lead-in question. He comes home and talks about it all the time. He's like, this guy emailed me asking about the champ. Oh, they, they call me. And that's, oh, do they? I didn't know that. I thought they emailed you. And that's flattering because <laughs> it's hard to even get you to call me. Oh, well. You know, a girl's going to do what a girl's going to do. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, you mind if I fly? Yeah, go for it. Sweet. You're sick. All right. Well, I can't see the ball in front of me, so feel free to whack me if you need to. Oh, I'll take it easy on you. So one of the first things I noticed about the Champ when we first got this, came across this airplane is just how smooth it is, especially like we were talking about earlier on the ground. But even in the air, it's just a real easy flyer. It's a real treat. Oh, definitely. All righty. I've had my fill. I'll be a passenger princess again. All right. My <laughs> sick. One of the coolest things about a... You know, you're, you're mentioning the rag and tube airplanes and uh, these old trainers like this is just kind of how slow they, they fly compared to uh, your typical trainer of today, your Cessna 172 or uh, whatever else we use. So we'll kind of look around. Yeah, well, one question it. I got for you, what's uh, what, what's attractive about this airplane? I mean, for, for most people, you know, they probably haven't seen an airplane like this or ridden in one, so you might see one come up for sale or be interested. Why would you? Why would you? What would you say to those people? You know, what can you vouch for for the airplane? Well, I can tell you, uh, at least from my from my point of view, uh, the affordability of one of these old trainers is, is cool. Um, now, as a 23 year old, it's kind of hard to find an airplane that'll fit the budget. Oh, but uh, especially if you have an aptitude to work on things yourself a little bit, uh, or at least want to learn to. Oh, an old, an old, an old airplane like this might be your, uh, might be what you're looking for. Well, how does that work if I if I just bought an airplane and I wanted to work on it myself? You know what? How much? How far can I go? What's legal? Oh uh, well, you know you got your preventative maintenance that you're allowed to perform as per uh, Part 43 of uh, the Federal Aviation Regulations. You can always work with a uh, an A and P mechanic, licensed A and P mechanic in your area who might be able to uh, teach you a few things gotcha. and uh, supervise your work power back and just demonstrate how slow we can, we can fly this airplane now that we've cleared the area. Passing through 55 miles per hour right now, so slower than, slower than I took on the interstate to get here. Wow. Are you losing altitude right now? Uh, no, we're steady, we're steady right here. There's 45. Wow. And there's 40. Wow. 35 miles an hour. I actually that's have not get done slow flight with you in this airplane. That's pretty impressive. No, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, <laughs> huh? And it's starting to get a little mushy right there. And how many RPM do you have in? Uh, we're doing about 1,800 RPM okay. right there. But if I were to... That looks like 33. Crank the power up a little bit. Wow. And our uh, airspeed indicator doesn't actually go any lower than that, unfortunately. 
Look at that angle of attack, that's crazy. Yeah, we're pretty high up there. The extra power of this engine helps with that too. We can really hang it up. Lucky enough to get to fly it back from uh, just south of Sacramento, California, all the way here to Galveston when we bought it. Yep. Which turned into an over 25 hour <laughs> flight. Yeah, uh, I do I do ferry flights every once in a while. I'll take a cub or a biplane somewhere and uh, it's always, it certainly is at the cabin class experience, but you know, that's kind of what makes it fun. Yeah. Get to stop and see new people, new places. Definitely. What was your favorite part of that trip, moving this airplane? Oh, man. Meeting my dog. <laughs> that would be, and of course, meeting up with you in the Los Angeles. Uh, that yes. takes the cake. Second place was the dog. Yeah, when this when this fellow, we weren't married yet, but when he showed up in a, gosh, what was the airport? It was right next to Los Angeles, LAX. It was Bakersfield. Was I got, ba I got no, not Bakersfield, where I met you. Oh, Hawthorne. Hawthorne. So I met him at Hawthorne. He told me the night before that he had this German Shepherd, and uh, he said if he could get it into the airplane, then he'd be showing up with it, and then he told me he couldn't catch the dog. And then when I get there, he's standing outside the champ with the dog, and that, that, that wild dog just rode in the back of where I'm sitting all the way back home. It was crazy. Uh, she sat right there in that, that seat and fell asleep. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. And we're dog lovers, too. We don't have Labradoodles, but uh, we have uh, two Jack Russells and a German Shepherd, so... But hey, now that I'm hosting the channel, maybe I need to get into some Labradoodles. We gotta throw one in the back here. Yeah. I was telling Bobby, I'm like, hey, I any think, excuse for more puppies, I love them. I <laughs> think the last thing we need is a fourth dog, but... Oh, maybe another airplane then, we already got two. Yeah, one and a half. One and a half. Yeah, so it's kind of a funny story. When, uh, when Cole bought this champ, um, I didn't want the champ, I wanted a cup. But he got the champ, because... Uh, he put his boy foot down about it, and I said, well, I'm putting my girl foot down, and I went and bought a biplane project, so I'll talk more about that later, but it's been a ride. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, well, we'll turn in here and make a long left base out of it for runway 18. You want to put your instructor hat on and land it from the back seat? Sure, I'll try my hand at it. All right. You're sick. I've got the airplane. Get a little wiggle there. I'll let you make the radio calls. I don't think I have a... Does I'll my do it. I think work? My, I think my push to talk still works better up here. Yeah, I'll let you get that one. Galveston traffic, Champion 84868. It's on a uh, three-mile left base, runway 18. Uh, we'll be remaining in the pattern. Galveston. So what's your recommended approach speed in this airplane? Well, are you going to land uh, on all three or on the, uh, uh, on the wheels? I'll attempt the wheelie. Okay, we'll do that. For wheelies, I'd say probably about 55. Okay, is that over hour. the numbers? Uh, yeah, that's your final approach speed. Okay. So just, just keep that, and then if you're going to wheel, uh, three-point it, I'd say final approach speed around 50. Do it. Okay. And then where's my carb heat in this airplane? Right here. So everything important we have... Right here on the left, okay. Yeah. So I'll we're, go we're, ahead and pull that good. if you're okay with that, so pull since we're close to the numbers. Pull it on back. And I'm not sure how you, you prefer to do it. When I'm flying, I always kind of give that carb heat back um, before I land. Do you do that as well? I like to do it. I don't know if it applies to this engine, but I know some engines, that carb heat air is, is unfiltered. Okay. So we do that before we get close to the ground where we're going to suck up some unfiltered air into the... That's a good point. I never thought of it like that. I always thought just so that if you have to go around, you have the most power available to you. It also gives you full power. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and give her back that carb heat now. For, I don't think we'd get carb heat or carb ice here. Uh, I think we'd probably make it. You remember what the wind was doing? Uh, it was one six zero at one zero. Okay, I'll give her a little. I'm at about seventy right now, so I need to come back a little bit. As Cole knows pretty well, I always like whenever I'm in a new airplane, I always come in a tad high and a tad fast, just so I can kind of get used to it and I have a little bit of wiggle room. But I'm really going to try to hit those numbers today. All right, you tell me if I'm crooked. Okay. I just keep that windward wing down. Awesome. All right, I'll let you take it. All right, I'll take it. My you got the airplane? My airplane. I'm going to get my tailwheel authority back by pulling that back. All right, on the side, I'll add full power. Got my stick almost all the way forward. We had enough airspeed. I didn't really need to go that far. All right, we'll make kind of a lower pattern. You know, that's such a hot topic, too, especially because, like, you know, at least the way I was trained, I don't know about you, um, 
But keeping those patterns pretty tight, you know, with a respectable amount of altitude, but keeping them tight so that, you know, if you lose your engine, right, you can always glide back to the runway. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Right. Well, always having it out, especially in a... Especially in a congested area like this, like Galveston. Oh, definitely. Getting near that runway, it's a lot more, uh, I want to be where I can land if something funny happens. Hi, Galveston traffic champion 84868, turning left base, runway 18, full stop, Galveston. Alright, I don't know if I'm going to be able to call my spot quite like you can, but I'll try. I'm going to come in a little bit slower, about 50 knots on the final approach speed and try to, try to land uh, three points. This airplane just likes it better. Flown airplanes that I'm are more comfortable to, to land wheelie. What about three points? Or like within a, in a uh, crosswind? Uh, a crosswind effector? Well, you've got uh, you've got less inertia, right? You've got less forward momentum. You've got less uh, control authority over your control surface because there's less uh, less air passing over them. But you also land with less airspeed. You've got less energy to, to throw you into a ground loop if you were to side load it. So it's it's picking the best tool for your current situation is what it is. All right, got my crosswind correction. In. Bring the stick back. We're trying to land with the stick all the way back if possible. Well, that was a greaser. You blew mine out of the water. Oh, uh, it was okay. All right, we'll turn the AC on. Never get tired of seeing that. <laughs> well, I know I'll wake up and I see you every morning, but thanks a lot for taking me along today, and I'm sure the viewers will appreciate the new inside as well, different airplane, so. Well, you know how readily I will talk about this airplane. Oh, so. of course. Happy to, happy to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the Champ. Uh, if y'all got any questions about the airplane or if there's another airplane you'd like to see on the channel, just leave a comment below or you can email me directly at emma at flyinggoogles.com. Um, we appreciate all of our likes and follows and uh, also our patrons and our Patreon account. Um, every single one of you guys really help and kind of helps fund the dream. I'm trying to do this kind of as a full-time gig, so, you know, we really appreciate you guys. Um, in the meantime, if you need an airplane moved or if you're interested, um, I run a, f a ferry service and this airplane also does uh, tailwheel endorsements. So you can find out more information about that at sirenflyingservice.com. Um, I'm also restoring a 1929 Travel Air. So it's a vintage biplane, it has a really cool story. Um, we're actually selling these t-shirts and pretty cool artwork on the back. Um, that all the proceeds of that are going towards funding the restoration and I'll be starting a channel on that too. Um, so y'all stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time.